What's up, guys? This is Brave, and I'm back to review Love and Marriage Huntsville. Yes, I know I have been MIA for doing reviews on this show, but your girl is back. This is season five, episode six. Um, I'm probably going to throw in a few comments about the previous episodes, but let's just go ahead and get right into this review. First things first, we have Stormy. She's at her Canvas Beauty warehouse, and she's having a team meeting with the staff. Now, she just wants to let the staff know that, you know, we have to stay on top of things. We have to make sure that when we're packing orders, we're giving people the correct items and all this stuff that you would usually hear in a team meeting. Because like she said, when I'm giving out free items and I'm taking things off of these people's orders, that's me losing money. And in her confessional, you know, she talks about how she ends up crying every meeting because, you know, this is really important to her and all this stuff. And she's like, you know, I just really want the staff to understand that basically when she created Canvas Beauty, she saw it as a vehicle to help other people. But I'm just going to have to be for real right now. And I need for entrepreneurs to really understand this. This is your passion. This is your baby. But the people who are working under you, this is just a job. No offense. No offense to anybody who's an entrepreneur or anything like that. But sometimes I think that people fail to realize that for a lot of people, especially what you have these people doing, filling orders, they are warehouse workers. They are treating this as a job. <laughs> like, and I'm not trying to be funny in any way, shape or form. I just feel like sometimes as entrepreneurs, you feel like everybody needs to give 150,000% because this is my business. This is my creation and all this stuff. And I get it. People need to efficiently do their job. But when you really break down what this person does on a day to day and they are warehouse workers, I don't see them out here trying to bend their back. Well, I should say break their back just so that you can have more money in your pockets. Like, yes, you are paying them a wage, but this isn't their their dream. This isn't their passion. So I understand why sometimes people who work in these types of um, situations when they are working in a warehouse or if they're working for any type of entrepreneur. Yeah, there's always going to be that conflict because this is your baby as a as an owner and an entrepreneur however for the people who work under you like i said it is just a job it is not their career it is not their end goal you know what i'm saying but let me know what y'all actually think about that so then she actually ends up going to the back with her husband and they have a quick little chit chat more about the business and how you know she ends up crying every time in front of the group and he's like you know i probably wouldn't cry in front of everybody but i'll probably cry you know it behind closed doors and they basically talk about how they definitely need more manpower at this job but they also need these people to pull their weight and here goes another problem they are actually related to some of these people and they treat them like family and here's the thing sometimes as an employer because that's what y'all are y'all are not family y'all need to go ahead and eliminate that word because that's like mixing business with pleasure you need to go ahead and let these people know that this is strictly business. You clock in, you clock out, you do your job, and that is it. Because at this point, people are getting comfortable at this job. That is exactly what this is. No matter how many orders y'all are receiving, these people are comfortable. So they're going to push stuff off if they feel like it. And as far as, you know, them bringing in new people, absolutely. I think that you should be bringing in new people. Me personally, I don't think that people should be working warehouse type positions forever unless there is actually growth in the company and you are able to move up in position now ain't no way i'm about to sit up here and be filling up bottles for five ten years and i have no promotion and i know that her cousin works for her company but listen sometimes you cannot hire family you just need to hire all outsiders no offense to family but sometimes it just messes things up but let's go ahead and move on all right, so now we flip on over to Melody. She's actually having a team meeting. First of all, Melody has a real team, y'all, of six people. Melody is bringing in bank, okay? Because if you have a team of six people, you are really doing something. Because each person that spoke, they had a different type of deal that they were trying to work on for Melody. She had somebody who was focusing on publicity, 
And I believe that that was the woman with the blonde hair. She also had someone who was working on philanthropic work where she was talking about meeting with the high school girls. You had somebody over there talking about a movie. And then you had somebody else talk about something totally different. I said, Melody is getting to the bag. Oh, the other lady, she was talking about her beauty line. I'm like, Melody Cherie is getting to the bag because it's not cheap to hire six other people to have to work for you and then secure other deals for you. For the most part, people may have like a publicist, an assistant, a manager, like for real. So shout out to Melody. So after the meeting, one of the ladies, she actually hangs back and her and Melody just talk about making sure that her mental health is good, making sure the kids are good ever since she got this divorce from Mars Hill. Let's go ahead and move on. All right, y'all. So now we move on over to Letitia and Marcel. And basically, they're meeting up with someone who works for the company Slutty Vegan. We all know that it is a popular vegan spot. I want to say it's in Atlanta. That may be where it started. I'm not really sure because I am from L.A. and I have not been to Atlanta. Nonetheless, you have Tisha just up here talking a good game about how this would be so great for Huntsville for them to get a slutty vegan. And baby girl was being super nice about it, but I don't think she had any real interest. No offense, but I feel like she's like, girl, I am not the decision maker in this. I'm just here to have a food truck rolling and going. So next thing you know, Kimmy and Maurice, they actually show up and they talk about how, you know, the meeting went on the last episode, which was a revisit to the comeback group. So basically, Tisha and Marceau can resell them this idea that these six people need to come together yet again and do something for the city of Huntsville. And here's the thing. You had Mel and Kimmy being the only smart ones in the room asking the proper questions. Is this something that is just for y'all? Or are we included on this? Are you actually expecting us to put in like some real footwork on this? Like Tisha and Marceau had no answers. They had nothing. This was just something that they thought of that they could probably film and left it up to the group. Y'all, we're going to see if the comeback group get back together. But nonetheless, this group, they decide to keep talking about it. And according to Tisha, they're just going to let the Holtz handle their personal issues. And then the business stuff, that's when they can talk about things. And here's my thing. The personal stuff that's going on between Mel and Martell is real deep. Because it's so deep that they're not even able to talk about it on this show. Like, have y'all noticed it? Mel has not said, we are going through a custody battle Because this man wants to take my children from me. I don't think she can legally say this on this TV show. But that is what is happening. So it's very frustrating for her to have to sit here, look at this man in the face while he's playing with her in court, saying that she's an unfit mother and he should get full custody. But we about to sit up here and film a scene so that way we can all come together and do what's good for Huntsville. I ain't worried about Huntsville. I'm worried about getting custody of my kids. You see what I'm saying? Priorities. <laughs> the priorities of Mel is not focused on this little comeback group stuff. I think she's more focused on doing things to get full custody or at least continue the joint custody of her kids and having to work with Martell. I don't really see that as an option. It's bad enough. She got to work with him on this show. But let's go ahead and move on. Now, y'all, this is where things got a little interesting in this little interaction that they have between Kimmy and Tisha. Because Tisha and Marceau are sitting up here re-explaining how they want this whole thing to work out. And Kimmy is still asking, so, is this y'all event? Or do y'all actually want us to put in any effort and really, like, put work into this? And she's like, oh, yeah, well, you know... Would you guys mind doing this? Would you mind? And I'm just like, ain't no would you mind. Basically, you want these people to work for free. And then y'all gonna reap all the benefits. And I hate the way Marceau is trying to be sneaky and make little jokes like, oh, yeah, we're sneakily using you. That ain't funny. Because like Kimmy said, we are all at another level. Why would I sit up here and invest my time? Keep in mind, Kimmy is going through... The whole process of becoming a cancer survivor, because that's what she is. She is a survivor and thriver. 
You mean to tell me that you want this woman to take time out of her day? Because we already know if you know anyone who has had cancer or if they are sick, or if they are sick in any way, sometimes they have good days, they have bad days. It affects them differently every single day. So you want this woman to take time out of her day to sit up here and make phone calls and put arrangements together and help you pull an event together? Tisha, get out of my face with this. Go away from me with this. Now, Maurice, you can take him and do whatever you want to because I don't know what Maurice do in the daytime. But listen, get Kimmy out of this. And then for Maurice to sit up there, I'm sorry, not Maurice, Marceau. Marceau sat up there and said, well, I'm not paying anybody. I said, well, baby, if that was me sitting there, I would have got my, my little slutty vegan bag. I would have got my purse and I would have gotten up because, baby, this meeting is over. Because there's no payments going out, then I don't need to show up for this. Listen, I think that is very cheap of the Scots to sit up here and be like, oh, we're not paying anybody for this event. If we do have, you know, donations and all this stuff, sponsorship, y'all ain't going to get a cut of the money because we ain't paying no speakers. Like, who does that? Especially... Knowing that y'all have like a a certain social status at this point, like y'all not just regular little Huntsville people throwing a little neighborhood event. Y'all are now on national TV. You know, the people are going to show up. Stop playing. And then for them to sit in that confessional and you also had Marcel saying, oh, because they started to act like the Scots. And then for Tisha to be like, oh, because is Kimmy hanging out with Mel too much? Ma'am, let's not do this again. Y'all just now barely getting on a good foot. Stop it. Let's go ahead and move on. Now, y'all, we got this scene with Martel and Marcel. First things first, I have got to circle back to last week when Martel had the audacity to tell us and play in our face talking about him and Sheree may possibly have kids. Who? Sheree who? Not Whitfield. Because last time I checked, I feel like Sheree Whitfield has been going through menopause for years at this point. Because let's not forget all the times that everybody else will be sitting there dry on Real Housewives of Atlanta. And she's over there sweating up a storm. Because what? Baby girl is probably having hot flashes. Let's not play with Sheree Whitfield. Her kids are old and grown. Cut it out. She ain't having no more kids. And you don't need to have any more kids either, sir. And then for him to sit up here and ignore her phone her phone calls like, that's just Sheree. It's so annoying that we are literally going to get two different storylines from Atlanta to Huntsville. Because Huntsville, they just friends. They just go. They just creeping around. Atlanta is about to be my man, my man, my man. What is going on? But let's go ahead and jump back over to this scene. Y'all, Martel still can't pass this dang old test. He still ain't got no license. And now he's going to Marceau to have him help him in, in exchange so that way he can go ahead and help Marceau get in shape. I said, baby, Marceau, good luck helping Martel because clearly he's not good at taking tests. He's not good at retaining information or he's not actually studying. Because maybe if he sat there and studied and not harassed Mel all day, he could pass this test. Then on top of that, you talk about some you going to help Marceau lose weight. Marceau, just go to the gym. Go watch some workout videos on YouTube. I'm pretty sure you go watch Juice and Toya. They might got something on there. And eat well. That's all you got to do. What you need Martel for? You know what? Let's move on. So, of course, Martel finds a way to bring up Mel. And he's like, why is her and Tisha now good friends? Sir, let the women be women and mind your business. Then he has the audacity to bring up the fact that, oh, well, Mel, she's inviting people that she said weren't even her friends. Sir, the reason why she actually invited Tisha was because Tisha has daughters. So, therefore, it makes sense for Tisha to bring her daughters to the party for her daughters. You know what I mean? Because these children have played together previously. These children were friends before. Like Martel, get a grip. Then he wants to whine to Martel. I mean, not Martel, to Maurice. God damn it. He wants to whine to Marceau. All these M's. 
about how, you know, because she kept my kids from me and I didn't get to spend time with my daughter. Shut up. We're tired. Shut up. Then for you to sit up here and go on and on about how Mel doesn't want people to see uh, her actually co-parenting with you. Sir, you're taking this woman to court so that way you can get full custody of her kids. There's no discussion at this point. You're in the wrong. You are loud and wrong. And you're still trying to fault Melody for things that you're doing. Like, it really bothers me that within these conversations that we have heard Martell have with other people, he's not saying, y'all know I'm taking her to court so I can get full custody of the kids. Like, no, stand in that. Say all that so that way everybody can look at you like the crazy person that you are. You know what, y'all? Let's just go ahead and move on because I'm tired of talking about this man. All right, y'all. So now we are back with Stormy and her husband, Courtney. They are back at the warehouse. And here's one thing that stands out for me. I'm just like, why you got your child at this warehouse? (laughs) Like, I understand that, you know, this is your business. But like you told the people that work there, we need to, you know, put in the effort to make this professional. Don't bring your kid to work. That ain't professional, Stormy. Next thing uh, I noticed, I know that she be saying that her and Courtney, they worked on this and all this stuff. Y'all, what Courtney do for the company? I'm just curious. I just want to know. Next thing you know. Her cousin, Junior, he's supposed to be at work. Is he there? No. He finally comes strolling in, and he has a conversation with Stormy. So before they can really even get into the conversation, next thing you know, Courtney shows up into the conversation. Now, one thing that I do want to point out is that I do know that a lot of companies now, I think it's, I don't know if it's mandatory, but I know that in California, a lot of times when you are talking to your employee, they always have a third party there that is usually supposed to be a neutral person that is just standing there observing. Usually they're not saying anything just to make sure nothing is misconstrued. Um, If this conversation goes one way or another, someone wants to complain to, you know, HR That is usually what that person is there for. However, Courtney is there to also voice his concerns with Junior working there because he goes on to admit that he rides Junior while he's working there. We also learn that Junior, he tends to get to work when he wants to get to work. I don't mean, you know, extremely late, but he get there at 8.05 because they said they have a grace period, which Here's the thing. I can't even lie. There has been plenty of times where I had to come into work and I am a few minutes late. And I understand the concept of traffic because, again, I live in L.A. Our traffic is crazy. If you do not leave at a certain time and you have to hop on certain freeways, baby, five minutes can lead you to an additional 25 minutes of traffic. Okay, now I don't know how it is in Huntsville. So then they ask him about working hard, right? He says that he thinks that he worked harder than everybody there. And I'm like, well, what the hell is happening? What's the camera say? Because <laughs> I'm like, there's two different conversations happening right now. I understand you can definitely get on him about being on time because you should be on time for work. I like, I am not justifying that at all. But again, y'all have a grace period. So sometimes when you give people grace periods, they're going to take the grace. Now, as far as him working hard, I don't know, because he was explaining earlier in the episode how he has to do multiple jobs and he's the only one that's doing it. So I feel like there's two things that can be true in this situation. So now you have um, Stormy going off of, well, the energy isn't right because y'all know she's now an energy person. And I'm just like, girl, the man is telling you that he is doing the best of his abilities. You going to keep him on the job or you're not. And it's annoying that you have Courtney snickering in the corner about how you ain't doing your best. You ain't doing your best because I be seeing you and you be on your phone. Another thing that I need for these jobs to, to really take into consideration. Um, no offense. We actually use our phones for multiple reasons. And honestly, allowing somebody to check their phone every once in a while is not going to kill y'all. Like, I understand if he's just sitting there on his phone 20 minutes, 30 minutes at a time. But honestly, checking your phone for a few minutes, sometimes you do need to take a little mental break away from what you're doing. Like, I know that that is definitely a standard that people, they should not be on their phones. But I need for us to be for real in this society. All of us are addicted to our phones. 
All of us use our phones for multiple reasons. Whether it be checking in with family, it could be just scrolling on the internet, looking up valid information. We use our phones consistently. So allowing somebody to check their phone every now and then is cool. Like it should be fine at this point. But of course, you still have these companies that have these old 1918 rules. So like he said, well, it's other people who work here and they be on their phone. Here's the thing, though. When Courtney walked by, it's clear that they make sure that they phones are in their pockets. That is the only difference. And probably because you're the cousin, you like, man, you already know me. We family. Why am I sneaking to use my phone? So now we have Stormy saying how, like, you know, this meeting isn't going well. In her confessional, she's like, you know, I didn't expect for Junior to be so gung-ho in not hearing me and understanding me. Here's the problem. It's not that he's not hearing you and understanding you. The problem is that you have your husband sitting there chiming in after everything that this man says. So you and him are not having a conversation. It is... You asking him questions about his workability, him answering your question, and then your husband questioning that. So then they get into like a little mini tit, tit for tat. So next thing you know, she ends up letting her cousin go. Oh, exactly after she says this, here goes her husband. Well, let me go ahead and get chess. Yeah, you can go ahead and come by the house uh, sometime this week. Sir, this was not the time for you to even say anything. I would have rather you just go ahead, excuse yourself out of the room, and left it at that. Because what really should have happened here is that you should have gone ahead and let this man know, you know what? This isn't working out. I don't think that you are meeting our standard at this point. Because it seems like you're coming in late, you're not working as hard as what you may have previously been working, and we've just noticed that we need to make some changes, and unfortunately, we have to let you go. That should have been, that just should have been all, I understand he's your family, but like, the way this whole situation played out, I wasn't here for it. Because I honestly, I don't think that they're really good. I feel like her cousin put on a great front that they were good because, you know, he really does love his cousin. But I think the way Courtney kept coming at him, I think he realized that, you know what, I'm not going to win this battle. At the end of the day, she's going to rock with her husband. And, of course, I have to take accountability for the fact that I was coming in late. But, again, that circles back because I'm just like, what's interesting to me is that he was like, you know, I never thought I'd be working for my cousin or whatever. And I'm just like, yeah, because you're working for her in what? The warehouse capacity. This man is just a what? A warehouse worker. He ain't even a warehouse manager. Because I feel like they would be coming at him differently if he was like the warehouse manager. So because he just worked there, baby boy, just go ahead and get you another job. Because like I said, being a warehouse worker, you are not going to give this job 150,000 percent because it's not your passion unfortunately it probably will alter their relationship as cousins but it is what it is all right y'all so now we get this scene between Mel and Martel because Melody is throwing a birthday party for her daughters and who decides to show up Martel this man is not invited this man is stirring up havoc in her real life so it's like I understand that it's your daughter's birthday but you know that we are in a heated uh, back and forth with this court situation. Why would you show up? Oh, because you know that we're filming. And when we're filming, that means that it's okay for me to just pop up on Melody. Absolutely not. Like she told him, you can get your daughter after this party. That's not a problem. But I'm doing this for my daughter. You do your own thing. So he's just over there. Hooping and hollering, stirring it up. It's like, Martel, please leave. It got to the point where Mel had to tell him, Sir, do I need to call the police on you? Because I will have the police escort you up out of here. And that is crazy. Then on top of that, he started yelling at, I don't know if it was a producer or another guest at the party, but he started yelling at them, yelling at her mama. It was getting real bad. Like, Martel just leaves. So, he finally does leave. Mel goes back into the party so she can go enjoy herself and celebrate her daughters. And we actually see her have a conversation between Kiki as well as Tisha. Because they both came to the party. Because I believe they both have daughters that are around the same age as Mel's kids. Which is perfect. 
So, they have this conversation, and it is good to see them getting along. We already know that Kiki is not feeling Tiffany. She lets it be known, and at some point, she's going to have a conversation with her. As for Tisha, she lets Mel know that her and Kiki have had a conversation, and they are working on their relationship. They're trying to repair it, as well as get, you know, their friendship back to where it was, because at one point, her and Kiki were close, and they're working on it. Cool. So then Mel's like, well, you know, Kiki, you can go ahead and come to my event that I'm going to have. I'm going to have an event where someone comes in, they're going to teach us how to communicate. And this way we can air out our differences with each other and we can do it in a respectful manner. Kiki's like, I'm totally down for it. So, of course, we are anticipating this high tea because that is where we're going to see Stormy's mom voice her opinion about Mel. And hopefully Mel has a rebuttal. But we shall see, y'all. Let me know what y'all thought about this episode. Go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. And I will talk to y'all in the next review. I promise I'm going to continue to review this show. All right, bye.